The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, X Zone Nation. This is the X Zone on the Talkstar Radio Network, X Zone Broadcast Network. UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, and Ustream. Don't forget, next uh, Monday, the 26th of July, Exxon TV hits the airwaves seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year at www.xzonetv.com. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is Psychic Jane Doherty. And uh, Jane has been named one of the top 20 psychics by Dr. Hans Holzer. She starred in TALC's A Dead Tenants and in a DVD series, Jane Doherty Investigates. She was the president of the New Jersey, of the Jersey Society of Parapsychology for more than 10 years and has been doing ghost investigations since 1990. She is the author of the book Awakening the Mystic Gift. She has been featured in such publications as the New York Times, New York Post, Woman's World Weekly, Mysteries Magazine. And, of course, she's been heard here on the Exxon, as well as more than 200 other radio shows. She's appeared on Fox Network News, Reuters News, CNN, and the Today Show. And uh, Jane is the caretaker, or one of the caretakers, of an ancient crystal skull, Maya. Jane has been seen, uh, or can be seen, in an upcoming episode of a new show on biography called My Ghost Story, airing on September the 4th. She is also featured in an upcoming movie playing an Amish grandmother in a supernatural thriller named Amy. Uh, She can see souls of the possessed. She'll also be speaking at the Myth of the Thirteen Ancient Crystal Skulls Conference that is going to be held in New York City this coming October. Joining me now is Jane Doherty. And Jane, always great having you here on the X-Zone. It's a pleasure to be on with you, Ben. So you're you're one busy lady. Um, how did you know that you had this gift that has brought you into so many lives on both sides of the veil? Actually, I taught myself how to become psychic. It's something um, that I didn't have. I didn't realize I had. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe as a child there were moments, but I thought it was just the way a mind works. And 25 years ago, I set out to develop it. Was it very hard for you to develop it, uh, develop the, the, uh, your psychic ability? No, it took, it took a great deal of time, I'd say, working on it almost every day mm-hmm. for about three years. But it can be done. Jane, you and I have to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be talking to our guest this hour, Jane Doherty, Exo Nation, about hauntings and spirit communication, as well as the realm of psychic phenomenon. 1-800-610-7035, worldwide, toll-free. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, and Ustream. Jane Doherty is our guest this hour, www.janedoherty.com. That's www.j-a-n-e-d-o-h-e-r-t-y.com. We'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break as we continue here in the X-Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good To Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen. Jane Doherty is our special guest, and uh, Jane... Can you describe your psychic ability and and how you use it? Uh, yes, I consider myself clairvoyant, and I'm also uh, sentient. I have I get a lot of feelings, mm-hmm. and I consider myself a psychic medium. And I do three or four different things. I'll do uh, readings for the future. Mm-hmm. I will do spirit communication in seances, and then I also use it in ghost investigations. In your book, Awakening the Mystic Gift, you detail how you became a psychic. Now, you believe it's a natural gift and, and teach others how to develop the ability. Now, here's, here's my question to you, Jane. What mm-hmm. benefits would someone have or would someone gain by trying to develop their psychic abilities? It's an incredible way to develop your own confidence because you have to trust what you receive it has to do with your confidence in being able to perceive and trust. You also would make better decisions. I'm a Libra, and that we usually can't always make decisions. Mm-hmm. And once I opened up my ability, it amazes me how I can make decisions now for my own self as well as for others, which was always a problem before. And, of course, it gives you uh, a greater awareness, spirituality. And one thing that most people don't know it actually can increase uh, your, uh, you have better sex as a result of the ability. Hold on here. <laughs> you, have better, you, you have better sex because of your psychic ability. Absolutely. How, 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 explain this to me. How does that work? Okay, think of it this way. Mm-hmm. Because as a psychic, uh, I'm, I become more sensitive which means I'm more sensitive about everything. And that's exactly what happens to a person. It's a greater awareness, expansion of awareness. So you can't help but have better sex because you're feeling more. All righty. 
do you have any quick tips on how to develop a your psychic ability? Uh, yes. The, the number one thing that you have to do is to learn how to relax and then take that relaxation mm-hmm. to a level where you can instantly relax. And it's sharpening your concentration in order to get into the psychic level of the mind, you have to concentrate. So sharpening that ability will help you to get there. What do you consider to be your most rewarding and accurate prediction? I have to say predicting, well, there's actually two, predicting the terrorist attacks on New York and Washington, D.C. I was doing a psychic call-in show, and it was a few days after the USS Cole was attacked. And the radio host asked me if the USS Cole would be attacked again. And I said, no. I said, but terrorists are on our soil, and they're going to attack New York City and Washington, D.C. Then what happened is the day after 9-11, I got Mm -hmm. a telephone call from a client thanking me for saving her life. A year and a half before, she was without a job, and she had a job offer in New York, and she called to see my uh, psychic impressions of it. Mm -hmm. And I became very upset. And when she told me the name of the company, and I said, I I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm asking you, please don't take it. I said, for some reason, I see the company collapsing, and I don't know what it means. I just know it's not there anymore. And she listened to me and didn't take the job. That was Cantor Fitzgerald with the company. You also do ghost investigating and ghost research. You've been doing this for over 20 years now. And uh, apparently you have a very unusual physical reaction to spirit energy. Can you tell us about that and what happens to you? Uh, Yes. When I am in uh, spirit energy, my stomach expands anywhere from three to five inches. It's been measured. It's a crazy phenomenon. It's been happening for over 20 years. And it's, you know, you first develop the ability and you're doing readings. And then Mm -hmm. I was taken into a ghost investigation and that sensitivity uh, just occurred. So does your does your stomach expand when you're doing readings for people and a spirit enters the room? Oh, absolutely. If a wow. spirit should enter the room, like in a seance, you're having spirits enter the room. So as that happens, my stomach will expand. I'm, you know, I can be, I will tell you, I had a funny experience when I was speaking at a hypnosis convention in New Hampshire, and I was out on the steps talking to a gentleman from California, and without, you know, knowing why at first, my stomach expanded, and I yelped because I wasn't expecting it. Mm-hmm. And an, an old gentleman had just walked by, and I followed him, and as I got near him, my stomach would expand. And then I learned he had just been rescued from his house that was flooding as a result of hurricane. So a spirit had to still be around him, and that's why I sensed it. Why are some people so sensitive to ghost phenomena and others aren't? Some people see ghosts, others don't. Some people feel the presence of a, of a spirit, others don't. What determines who has this ability and who doesn't? I think part of it has to do with who the spirit chooses to show itself to. That's one. Mm-hmm. And two, I believe it has to do with your sensitivity. If you're a very um, anal person or always focused, always having to be on time, so to speak, mm-hmm. I think your, your, your aura is closer to you. So therefore, you aren't going to be sensitive enough. Uh, if you're a more artistic, creative person, you're naturally more open, and that awareness is expanded. And, and people like that, I think, have more of a tendency to experience spirit than others. In the years that, that you've been doing spirit communication as well as doing, doing your readings and helping people communicate from one side of the veil to the other, uh, Jane, in your opinion, what are the most common ways a deceased loved one tries to communicate with a living family member? To me, my experience has been smells is very, very common. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a tobacco smell or a cologne that a loved one wore sometimes a floral scent, maybe they liked roses and always had roses around, you would get that smell. The other most common way is dreams. When you have a very, very vivid dream 
a deceased loved one and you feel almost as though you were there Mm -hmm. with them, you probably were. Because in that dream, you you stepped out of your body and you're just in that dimension with them. And the other way is a funny way, and that is objects being moved. That's how they try to get your attention. You, You may put your keys, let's say, on a counter and you go by and they're not there and you look all over for hours. You can't find them, and you're about to give up, and you walk into that room where you had looked 20 times, and there's the keys on the counter. Why do they do that? It, it's just to get your attention. It, uh, that's what I feel it is. They're being playful and trying to get your attention, to let you, to let you know that they're there. Is there such a thing as a negative entity or a spirit that could actually harm the living? I think that... There are people out there, there are spirits out there that are definitely negative, Mm -hmm. but most of them are not where they can't harm you. The only way that they could is if they had enough energy to be, earth energy, to be able to gain enough strength to do something. One of the biggest factors I find is fear and emotional trauma is going to be energy that they can use. So naturally, if you go into a negative situation, then there is a negative spirit there. If there is a lot of fear or emotion flying around, they can use that energy. And in that sense, they could hurt you. They could they could push you. Or uh, I've had I've had ones try to strangle me. So really, they can do things. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you dispel or how do you get rid of an entity that's trying to strangle you that has no substance? Uh, the way, well, I'm just talking to it in, in the sense of mm. it strangling me and I'm trying to get through that situation. And once I got out of the energy, like I'll try to free myself from where I am, and it stopped. If I had to get rid of a negative spirit or someone that's possessed, mm-hmm. let's say, and I had to do that in a seance, actually I'll bring the spirit to me. My stomach will expand, so in essence my stomach traps it until I'm able to breathe and release it with the help of the other side, to the other side. Over the years where you've been investigating ghosts, where you've been using your psychic ability, has there been one haunting or one ghost experience that stands out in your mind more than any other? Uh, Well, I think the one that, uh, well, there's a few that that really do Mm -hmm. stand out, and I think that is the... Uh, the investigation at the ghost of uh, the Shades of Death Road in New Jersey, in northwest New Jersey, because that was outside. And we were doing seance at midnight around a lake that was supposedly haunted. And there was a lot of activity, and I felt there was something watching us. And at that, we saw a light above us, which could have been a UFO. We have no idea. But this was being, it was a, uh, for the, the DVD series. And in that DVD series, what you see at that moment that we're all looking and feeling something is you see something go up uh, a man's shirt that was standing by me. Wow. So that, that sticks out because of the uh, physical thing that we caught on mm-hmm. camera and also the Lizzie Borden house. All right, let's talk about the Lizzie Borden house when we come back from this news break, Jane. Great okay. talking to you. Jane Doherty is our special guest this hour, XO Nation, www.janedoherty.com. That's www.j-a-n-e-d-o-h-e-r-t-y.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this news break. After all, this is truly a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. The show is carried on our second network from 2 a.m. until 6 a.m. And on a third network from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. The Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, will return from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the other side of this news break with our special guest this hour, Jane Doherty. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. 
For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. Jane Doherty is our special guest, Textual Nation, www.janedoherty.com. Jane, before we went to the commercial break, we were talking about uh, you actually doing a an investigation at the Lizzie Borden house to determine whether she was innocent or not, going back to the events that happened in that house in 1892, I believe, which was an unsolved murder. What was the outcome of that investigation? Well, it was interesting because uh, before I left to go with it, I started to have a dream of a man, and I had no idea who he was until I got to Lizzie Borden house. And as I was going through the rooms doing the investigation, I, I came upon a picture and immediately recognized who this person was. It was the person in my dream, and it turned out to be one of Lizzie's relatives. As uh, the, you know, it proceeded, we did a seance, and in the seance, what happened is Abby Borden, the stepmother, came through me and spoke, and it was not Lizzie who, who committed the murders. It actually was the original mother's brother, Charlie, who hired a helping hand to commit the deed. And it was blamed on Lizzie, which a lot of people don't realize that in reality, Lizzie was partly retarded. In those, those days, mm-hmm. it would be easy to blame her for the murder. Um, she's often heard in the bed and breakfast giggling at the top of those steps near her bedroom and where the stepmother was found dead. And I've captured that in an EVP, which is on my website. You can hear her giggling, and that's what she did when she saw uh, the uh, body of her stepmother. So what happens with this information that that you channeled? Uh, Does anything get changed? Or is this just, okay, this is the information that was received uh, during a, Mm -hmm. a seance, and this puts, this should be added to the established record. Uh, yes, it was. Go- there was actually going to be a very huge symposium on Lizzie Borden mm-hmm. last summer that I was an invited guest speaker to uh, give my findings, and that's what it was all about. But then the person handling it got ill, and it, it, it was canceled. Oh, no. so hopefully, in the future, they are hoping to put this on, and what you know, they were hoping all the findings from different uh, modalities, from science. Mm-hmm. From history, from the historian point of view, and from the psychic point of view, I was the invited guest. Tell me, have you ever been frightened uh, during an investigation? Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> uh, I think probably my most frightening experience happened when I was doing an investigation in Cape May, New Jersey, in Sea Alley Inn, and I was expecting a female spirit, and I was sleeping alone in the house, mm-hmm. and instead... The spirit came in bed with me, Uh and I got really frightened after the second time. The first time, I told it to leave, and it went away. It came back, and I could feel it lie down on the bed next to me, and I got really scared because it was calling a a female's name, and I knew it was a man. So that totally frightened me. I froze, and I couldn't turn over or Mm -hmm. grab my camera or anything from that experience. And I'd say the the other one that I had actually was in a go-go bar that I had to stay overnight in. 
to do an investigation, and it was gangster that from the 20s that was in the building and the spirit. And I was trying to get it to come to me, and I kept telling him, it's okay, I'm not frightened, I'm not frightened. Mm -hmm. And I could feel it touching my shoulder, and I'm saying this aloud. And somebody was supposed to be tape recording and videotaping, but they got scared watching me. And then what happened is I actually felt hands over me, but what frightened me is it was like I was looking at the top of my head, and my head was glass, and I could actually see the fingers over my head. That's freaky. And that was just totally, it, it freaked me to no mm. end. And of course, we couldn't leave the building because we were locked in. <laughs> Needless to say, uh, we didn't do much else than just stay awake and watch <laughs> anything that came around. <laughs> Tell me, um, where does your interest in the crystal skulls come from? Actually, um, I wasn't interested in them until years ago when I started reading about them and I mm -hmm. had already purchased two crystal skulls, and I started to work with them in my readings, and when I first started to use the skull and to activate it, I, I had to put it away for a while because it actually kept moving on my dresser. So that's how I began, and then I started using them in my readings for energy and just the smaller one I'll use as a dial almost to bring back psychic information. Mm -hmm. But over the years now, there is a lot of interest in the ancient skulls and what they can do. And I've had a lot of experiences with mine. It's turned colors. I've been to see the white buffalo in Wisconsin, and it turned pink in front of the white buffalo as I was asking the question. I, I, there have been cures that have occurred using the skull. So they're very interesting. What kind of cures? Um, actually, Someone was supposed to uh, go through surgery, and energy came. I sent it, and the, they, they went to the doctors for a second opinion, and it turned out that it was not there anymore, what they were supposed to have surgery on. And another one was actually a miracle cure. I was doing a reading, mm -hmm. and my body started to shake as I was holding the person's hand. And I just told her to just hang on. I felt it was healing coming through in front of the skull. And what had happened is she was going to go on disability because she had had a stroke and there was no way that she could work anymore. She was a young woman of about 38 years old. That is young. And the next day she went to the doctor for that final MRI. And when the doctor took that final MRI to give her the papers for disability, he, he just kept saying, oh, my God, I don't believe this. I don't believe this. And then she said, what happened? Did it get worse? And she, he said, worse. He says, it's not there anymore. There's no evidence that you ever had a tumor and, any, and, and that it caused a stroke. So there's interesting things that go on. I, 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 it certainly seems like it. There's a myth of the 13 skulls, and I was wondering if you could explain that myth to our Exxon Nation. Sure. There is a myth in dealing with 2012 especially mm -hmm. that there are going to be 13 life-size skulls that are supposedly going to come together, and as they come together, they actually help in the vibration of the Earth and stop cataclysmic changes. Now, how many life-size skulls are there presently? I believe right now in what's considered to be ancient, there's probably only about eight or nine. Mine is not life-size. Mm. Mine is more of the size of softball, almost like it had been in ritual where you can hold it and, you know, and, and put it over people's heads or right. you know, in different ways. But what, but, ha but what happens, Jane, come December the 21st, 2012, and the other skulls have not been found yet? Good question. Um, there is also some talk about they don't have to be found, that okay. they could be already uh, buried in certain uh, lines, geometric lines out mm -hmm. there. But that's a possibility. But, again, it's a myth. It's an urban legend that was started. And there's more and more of these crystal skulls coming out and there are some contemporary ones, and supposedly even the contemporary skulls are also hold energy and vibration. 
Jane, what is your take on what is going to happen or the myth behind 2012? I don't believe that it's going to be the end of the world, as some people believe. Mm -hmm. I do feel that there are going to be some physical changes there. There are going to be earthquakes. We're we're in it now. Mm -hmm. You can see what's going on in the strange weather patterns in the Earth uh, eruptions and things like this. However, what I do feel is that it's a change in consciousness and a higher vibration. And I, I feel that it may not happen exactly on December 21st, but I do feel that we are going to have the uh, UFOs from other dimensions, planets, are going to be coming here. I think that's what we have to look forward to without realizing this is what's going on. So do you think there's a definite connection between the crystal skulls and UFOs? Yes. Definitely. I feel as though there's some sort of monitoring device. I also think that the vibrations as it's being unleashed Mm -hmm. also is helping raise vibrations of people around them. So I do feel that they are connected. And they may have been dropped or or not even that, but just been been around the time that there were aliens here. What is your belief or what is your opinion of a Ouija board and are they dangerous? Interesting question because actually when I was developing my psychic ability, mm-hmm. that's one of the first things I did in trying to determine whether I had opened the ability or not was using a Ouija board. Hmm. So I have a different view probably than a lot of psychics. Uh, I feel the danger is in who you work with it with and that you can make contact with the spirit world, but you need to know how to work with it. What people do is they get frightened by what's coming through. They, you know, let go of it and put it away. Well, that doesn't do any good because you've invited that spirit there. And just closing the board and getting rid of it isn't going to change getting rid of that spirit. You have to be strong enough to command the spirit to leave and not to end the session unless something good comes. Do you think children and teenagers should use a Ouija board? I'm not, no. I don't think children and teenagers should use a Ouija board because I don't think that they Mm -hmm. really are going to know how to, how to work it. And they could, it could present some danger in what they could bring, especially if they're drinking in, in any capacity where they're using it. I have that problem when I go to seances. Sometimes people are, you know, gathered together first to have dinner or Mm -hmm. whatever, and I walk in and I find people are drinking. I I get upset because I I can't let them in the circle if they've had more than two drinks because it can attract a negative spirit and you could get possessed if you're drinking. So how do you protect yourself when you're doing a seance from a negative spirit communicating or trying to enter into you? Uh, I will always say a prayer first. I often, before I leave my house, will Mm -hmm. take the crystal skull above my head and bring in the white light of God in protecting me. And that's always present, these tools of mine, in order to have that protection. And I have a tremendous faith in God. So, therefore, just from that, I've been in situations where I know I've been protected. What is faith, what is the relationship between a person's faith and psychic phenomenon? I, I think that Unless you have a faith in something, I don't care what your religion is, Mm -hmm. but it's faith in a higher power. If you dabble in this work and you open it up and you don't have pure intentions, you can get yourself into trouble. If you have faith and belief, no matter what you encounter, you will stay strong enough to know that you are protected and not succumb to anything negative. So your, so your faith is your protection, your, your, your shield Absolutely. against negativity. Gotcha. Absolutely. When somebody comes and sits in front of you and asks for a reading or asks you to communicate with someone who has passed, has there ever been a time in your 20 years doing this, Jane, where the message is so negative or there's, there's an impending danger that you, how do you, how do you cope with that? Do you, do you tell the person of the impending danger? If I can, I always try to be truthful. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
if if I can prevent it by telling them about it, I'm going to be very straightforward and be able to tell them. For instance, let's say I see a car accident for them. Mm-hmm. I'll explain to them the circumstances that I see this happening and let them know they can prevent it if they're careful in this situation. If I see, you know, a death in a, in a family member, I'll first determine whether they can handle it or not. And if they can, I'll be straightforward. If they can't, I'll kind of disguise it in some way so when they get there, they'll understand I did tell them about it. I just put it in a in a code, so to speak. All right, Jane, please stand by. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exonation. One of the world's top 20 psychics is my guest this hour, as as determined by Dr. Hans Holzer, Jane Doherty. Her website is www.janedoherty.com. That's J-A-N-E-D-O-H-E-R-T-Y.com. Jane and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And I'd like to... Once again, welcome a new affiliate to the Exxon Nation family, KKRP AM 950 Rainbow 95. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good to Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? Why are crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good to Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xt.com. ZBN.net. Jane Doherty is our special guest, Exxon Nation. www.janedoherty.com. Jane, you're going to be at a um, at a Crystal Skull convention or conference in New York City uh, this coming October. Can you tell us about it? Uh, yes, it's a three day event. Mm-hmm. Actually, it begins on that Friday, October eighth, with the Mayan elders speaking at the UN for a program talking about 2012 and their actual beliefs about it. And then on that Saturday and Sunday, the 9th and 10th, there is a lineup of speakers, all with crystal skulls, and archaeologist Stephen Mailer will be there and some other people like that. And then on that Monday, there's individual sessions with skulls. Are you going to have your crystal skulls available for the public to see at this conference? Yes, I will be there as a speaker and my skulls will be there, and I'll be doing the program. 
Whatever happened to the Mitchell Hedges skull? Uh, Bill Holman now has it, and uh, it's out there, but from what I hear within the Crystal Skull community, Mm -hmm. uh, he's not taking it out like Anna Mitchell's did, so it's not being shown as much. I, there, there was quite a controversy about the yeah. origins of the of the Mitchell Hedges uh, crystal skull, um, and and I was wondering if I could just get your thoughts on it. I've never been in its presence, mm-hmm. but I've always felt, um, I don't know, strange about it that because there was always so much controversy, mm-hmm. you couldn't make out whether it was real or not. Stories right. changed. So that, to me, was always a possibility. I know recently I've been told, uh, I think Jane Walsh from the, um, the, the anthropologist did work and it's come out and said that it is a fake. Yeah. So I don't know. I haven't been in its presence. It, it still has some sort of power, mm-hmm. but whether it was found like it was, uh, it probably wasn't. I know that Stephen Naylor... He feels that the only one that definitively can be said is absolutely ancient is Nick Nazarino's uh, Shanara. Yeah, and oh. and um, let me see. Lloyd Pye has a skull that is called the uh, Star Child, and I was wondering if you, uh, even though it's not crystal, but apparently it too has some very unique uh, powers and i was wondering if you had any knowledge of uh, of star child or if you've uh, ever ever seen it no i haven't seen it i've heard about it but i mm-hmm. haven't seen it i'm sure there'll be a lot of people who may be bringing their skulls to this convention in in october uh it's interesting i definitely feel they're connected to et because mm-hmm. as a result of them coming into my life uh, i had a ufo experience and I also started off with these water rocks and hydrites that come only from Brazil. Yes. And face formed in them. Wow. And then when I got the skull, mm-hmm. there was an eyes and a nose, just two eyes and a nose. And when I got the skull, and within a month, a smile appeared in the rock. That was probably because of your personality, Jane. <laughs> Jane, you, you and I have to say so long for now. I do want to thank you ever so much for joining us. A great pleasure having you back here in the X-Zone. And I look forward to the next time when you and I meet. Let's uh, let's do it before you go to the conference, all right? Okay, very good. Jane Doherty, thank you very much for joining us. Exo Nation, Jane Doherty's website is www.janedoherty.com. And I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exo continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't go away. <laughs> 